Hello, I'm Tom McDermott. I'm a pianist composer who moved from St. Louis to New Orleans in 1984. So um, I moved here primarily as a solo pianist, the little tiny bit of band work, and I worked for the first, uh, I'd say six years as a solo pianist, uh, and a non-singing solo pianist, which is makes it a little harder. But I, in fact, uh, have been able to play piano pretty well from a young age. So I, and when I started to, uh, when, I, when I moved here, I started making it a point of really learning New Orleans music. I had known people like Jill Earl Morton and trad jazz, traditional jazz, and we call it trad jazz from, from an early age. Uh, but then in around 80, 81, 82, I started getting into the New Orleans rhythm and blues piano heritage of um, you know, Dr. John Professor Longhair and especially James Booker. You know, just the idea that, you know, I had always thought as a, as a kid, I played ragtime. I discovered mu the music of Joplin right before the sting uh, but right after a fellow named Joshua Rifkin, who was a Bach musicologist and uh, did other things as well, but he recorded these very well-studied versions of Joplin, which took it as serious classical music and not as honky-tonk people with straw hats and garters and Shakey's Pizza and all that, but as, as concert music. and. Um, those mu the, the, they were art house favorites, and I got into that. So I thought for a long time that ragtime was kind of the beginning of uh, you could say the ascendancy of African American music via its its rhythmic strengths. Um, but in fact, through Ned, I learned. Uh, that, uh, say, for instance, we think of uh, how many times have you heard a ragtime end, a rag end with dun 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 dun, dun right? It's, it's a cliche that's in thousands of pieces. Well, ba -ba -da -ba -da. That's, the, that's the first five notes of that, is a rhythm called the synchio, and that comes from uh, San Domingue, now Haiti. So, I had the revelation that ragtime rhythm comes from Haiti, and that was like, what, you know? So ragtime, in fact, was not, you know, we had minstrel music and all that, but ragtime was international music. It swept, and I thought it was the, the fulcrum that opened up the world to jazz and swing and R&B and everything that came after. But in fact, uh, it was probably the notation of um, the Cuban habanera rhythm, which starts, and I learned this from Ned, in around 1805 or so, or the first written examples. Before that, there were no recordings, of course, so the only way you could experience music was through live performance, but once it was written down, then it could be transmitted all over the world by anybody who could, to anybody who could read music. So um, this begins in Spain, where, uh, you know, Europeans start writing melodies with these African rhythms, with the bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, a rhythm which is called the tango rhythm. It's also called the habanera rhythm. Ha habanera meaning is a feminine f from Havana. And um, that rhythm travels all over the world. Right after Katrina, you heard phrases like cultural Armageddon, you know. He said he's never going to be the same. And in fact, for a long time, it was, what, 60% of the city 
Now it's back up to, I don't know, 80%. I don't know what the figure is. Plus, there have been a lot of people moving here, either for, for, for several factors, either to come help rebuild. They came here and they said, this is great. To the, uh, the TV HBO series Treme, I think, turned on a lot of people. Three, um, the gentrification of places like the Bay Area. Of course, that's been going on a long time, but now it's reached a, a fever pitch, as I understand it. And, and New York City, both bohemian hubs of musicians. So there's a lot of musicians moving into town. I just met one two nights ago who is might be the best fiddler in probably in town. He's a young kid. And uh, as I remarked uh, to a, another St. Louis, and I said, man, you know, every time you turn around, there's a new monster in town. And he said, yeah, it's $10,000 there. And now there's nothing in that, the Marigny or the Bywater for less than 200000 probably. So now it's gone over St. Claude into the seventh ward, which has been a black neighborhood, but not for that long, actually. It only became a, a majority black neighborhood after a white flight, which was in the 1960s. Before that, it was mostly white. So um, gentrification, I think, in a way, it's, in a way it's good because beautiful old buildings need to be saved because that makes New Orleans, New Orleans as much as the music and the food. The music and the food can be regenerated, especially the food. Recipes can be discovered in old books and started up again. And people would argue that the food scene is stronger post-Katrina.